So the market has recently been crashing from those new all-time highs. I made it very, very clear in terms of my last analysis on the market that you're going to want to be buying put options when the SPY hits those new all-time highs. I even had measured the move saying 575 was going to be a key level of interest. This is now the second day in a row where we are crashing from that all-time high level towards 575 in the pre-market. We did end up buying put options today, making multiple hundred percent proper returns directly at the market open. I'm going to be breaking breaking down the overall trades that we ended up making towards the end of this video. First things first, we're going to get into the new game plan. The new money-making information I have for you, I'm going to be walking you through the new key levels of interest. I'm going to be sharing with you a new swing trading idea that I have. I'm going to be breaking everything down, starting with the weekly chart, going over a potential swing trading idea. Then I'm going to get into the daily chart and the 10-day, 30-minute chart. I'm going to walk you through the best levels possible to be buying put options to make money as the market's going down. And then I'm going to walk you through the best levels possible to be buying call options, the key over sold levels to be scalping at to make money as the market's going up. Let's get straight into it. I'm going to give you a day trading and swing trading analysis. So in terms of the weekly chart analysis, based off of how the weekly chart is currently setting up, the SPY is going to try to close at the moment bearish on the week. So the focus in terms of put options is going to be to buy put options at major resistance levels. And I'm gonna be walking you through how I come up with these overall levels. Now, in terms of the thesis behind this from a technical point of view, what I wanted to show you in terms of um, weekly chart, this is what could potentially um, be happening here. You can see right here, we have this red candlestick on the weekly chart. Um, and then you have this red candlestick on the weekly chart. You have a slanted bullish uptrend to the upside. You have a slanted bullish uptrend to the upside. You have a slanted bullish uptrend to the upside, right? And then in terms of this weekly um, pattern that I'm looking at, compare this candlestick right here, compare this candlestick right here to this candlestick right here. And then prior to that, we have the red weekly candle along with three slanted, you know, bullish weeks, right? It's a very similar pattern in a sense, right? So in terms of how it tends to react the next week on this overall pattern, you can see that the next week, the SPY tends to sell off and close bearish, and it tends to double top at the previous week highs, double tops the previous week highs, sells off, double tops the previous week highs. In terms of this situation at a higher level, it ended up going under the previous week lows. In this situation, it ended up bottoming towards the previous week lows, not going under, right? But a lot of similarities where it's basically saying that you're gonna wanna be focusing on put options in terms of key resistance levels, obviously at all time highs, obviously at major resistance levels, and where the week can potentially close at is either at the previous week lows or we can get more new lows. And in terms of pattern recognition, we're already starting to get new weekly lows in a sense compared to um, last week's. So we're already um, cracking those previous week lows, right? And in terms of how this looks, it's really starting to look like this overall trend, man. If you just look at this, see how there's a small gap in between. See how it looks like there's a small gap in between. See how it looks there's like a small gap in between. Then it double tops at new all-time highs. Then it double tops at new all-time highs. And then as you can see, the week, the next week, it sells off very, very hard. And then it really starts to flip bearish. I'm telling you, man, based off of how the market is setting up, we're going to be setting up for phenomenal day trade opportunities when the SPY hits key resistance levels towards all-time highs and towards lower highs. In terms of the strategy, I'll be walking you down through it. Um, I'll be walking you through it. You simply identify a key support level that cracks and then it has a major bull trap and it sells off hard, a breakdown of support. And then once the SPY spikes back to that previous breakdown level, the breakdown and retest overall strategy, you're going to want to buy put options for a lower high when the overall trend is bearish. And based off of how we're setting up, man, to me, it clearly looks like this pattern can potentially repeat itself. We're already cracking the previous week lows, man. And if you just study this, man, look at this weekly candle. 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 They're nearly identical. And then the small gap in between, the small gap in between, retest previous all-time highs, retest previous all-time highs, starts to break under the previous week lows. And it just keeps on selling off and selling off and selling off, forming those um, lower highs, right? So um, in terms of the overall market, this is setting up for an amazing swing trading opportunity. Now, in terms of like how much time to give it, I mean, if you like, 
you can go like next Friday. You can go next Friday if you want to play for an overall bigger move. I would encourage you to look for, I would say, four to five weeks out. If you're looking to play for the bigger move, four to five weeks out. You can do both if you like, right? So um, if you are interested in swing trading, put options, right? Um, the beauty of trading options is you know exactly how much you're going to lose. Whatever you put in, that's your absolute max risk. If the contract is by worthless, that's the most you can lose, right? But I'm telling you, based off of how the market is setting up, we're setting up for a great swing trading opportunity in terms of if you're willing to hold till Friday. Also, if you're willing to hold potentially for four, four to five weeks, it could be two swing trade opportunities, right? So in terms of the levels, man, you need to focus on key resistance. Based off the weekly chart, those highs are going to maintain towards those all-time highs, which would be the best level possible, meaning if SPY retest towards all-time highs, that's like an auto entry for puts. Obviously, you want to use confirmation along with this foundation I'm setting up for you with the weekly chart. Now, in terms of the daily chart, this is how the daily chart is setting up for tomorrow. So the weekly chart helped give us a sense of direction on where we can close for the week. It also gave us a sense of direction where SPY can be heading for the next following weeks, right? But that has to be updated week by week in terms of the next following weeks. That could change, right? But that's how it's looking right now. In terms of the, um, and, and the weekly chart also gave us an ideal entry to be, um, you know, not only swing trading put options, but day trading put options, day trading put options at that key level of interest towards the new all-time highs. The weekly chart gave that away as well, right? So if you followed the last um, week's video analysis, you should have done absolutely, um, you should have done absolutely phenomenal on the last video that I posted because I made it very, very clear to buy put options when the spy hits new all-time highs. I broke it down, explained to you why. So, in terms of the next situation, we're breaking down the daily chart. So the daily chart is going to help us give a sense of just of direct of direction and foundation in terms of what to look for heading into tomorrow, right? So we dissect it. We go with the weekly chart. Then we go with the daily chart. Then we break it down by the 10 day, 30 minute chart, right? So in terms of what the daily chart is telling me, I'm seeing two current patterns. I'm going to walk you through in terms of um, what I'm seeing here, right? So I'm seeing two potential outcomes. These are things I'm going to be looking for. And um, this is going to help give us levels. And then we're using confirmations in terms of confirming which patterns are going to repeat itself, right? Um, dissecting the overall trade with the deck of cards that we have stacked in our favor. So in terms of the first overall um, pattern that I'm seeing, in terms of the spot you can see right here, we have two red bearish daily candlesticks. Then you have a green candlestick in the middle. Then you have a red bearish candlestick. And then, you know, you have this red, green, red pattern, which is bearish on the daily chart when spies that key resistance towards new all-time highs. And then the next day, it ends up gapping down. So if the spy ends up gapping down, what I want you to look for is I want you to look for previous support, 567.70, um 560 um six i want you to look for these bottom wicks these support levels to be reacting as resistance if the spy is gapping down and you're seeing 567 60 you're seeing 565 20 you're seeing key resistance towards the bottom of these wicks right so in terms of the bottom of these wicks um you know 567 50 566 565 50 somewhere in between that zone if you are seeing Bearish 30 minute candlestick confirmations and the spy is gapping down heading tomorrow. We'll open up lower than the previous closing price, 560.862 with a nice little gap down. You're going to want to be buying put options and sell into the move and set profit stops. Because based off that overall daily pattern, what can happen is if the spy gaps down, it can have a nice sell off. Then when it hits a key oversold level, it can close towards the middle of the day's price action. That's the first pattern that I'm seeing. So for that pattern to repeat in a sense, we're going to need a gap down and then once we get the gap down we're going to need to see resistance forming at one of the levels 565 30 567 70 those are the main overall zones look for the resistance right now in terms of the next situation that i'm seeing in terms of the spy you can see right here we have this um red bearish candle red bearish candle green green bullish candle in the middle red bearish candle the next day it bottoms towards the previous day's lows. So in terms of the next overall move, you can see on this day, in terms of the previous closing price, the SPY ended up previously closing at 552.08, right? And then the next day, it ended up opening at 550.20. So if we are seeing a small potential gap down, now I know in a sense, this kind of contradicts what I just said. It could potentially bottom 
at the previous day lows, which would be 566. So based off of these two daily patterns, in terms of what it is that I'm seeing, it's make or break, man. It truly is make or break. If we're getting a smaller gap down, it could potentially flip bullish for the overall daily chart. If we're getting a bigger gap down, it's more likely to react bearish based off the daily patterns. So what I'm telling you is, man, small gap down at 566 is reacting as support. We're seeing bullish 30 minute candlestick confirmations. You're going to want to buy call options heading into the market open, right? If we're getting a bigger gap down and you are seeing strong resistance at 565 in best with comparison with those two daily patterns that I gave you, it's kind of best to really just go with this lower level, man. But just to understand in terms of this breakdown for the bears to take full fucking control, they're going to need a bigger gap down. Um, and this is speaking for tomorrow, and we're going to need to go under 565. They need to go under 565. 565, you could see right here, this is a gap breakdown level, right? So in terms of this level, when the SPY goes under 565 and reacts as a resistance, that's when that daily pattern can repeat itself and the SPY can sell off hard to fill the gap below at 561.50, which would be the key level to buy calls for the potential reversal, right? Now, in terms of these daily patterns, what I'm comparing this and why I'm showing you these um, two, two examples and how important this is like make or break with this 566 level. And then, you know, for a true bearish move in a very bearish drop heading tomorrow, crack under 565 with a nice gap down. The comparison is this. You have this red bearish candle right here, red bearish candlestick 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 here on the daily chart. Green the middle, green the middle, green the middle. Red bearish candlestick, red bearish candlestick, red bearish candlestick. Now, in terms of similarities and what looks the most similar, it's this one. I showed you two patterns. This one looks the most similar. If you compare this daily candlestick right here to this daily, daily candlestick right here and the day before that, it's nearly fucking identical. There is some slight differences, but just some things to keep in mind, man, because I'm telling you, this make or break overall support level is 566 to 565. If it reacts bullish, it's going to be a play to day trade calls at open. If we're having a bigger gap down and you're seeing strong resistance below this like 566 and 565 cracks for the bears to take full control for the for the bear trap to not occur tomorrow right 565 needs to fucking crack if 565 cracks that's going to be the hard flush right so the main thing based off of what i'm seeing with these two patterns is if 565 cannot fucking crack and we're maintaining 566 is gonna spike right and then it's gonna try to sell off and if we have a bullish spike heading into tomorrow based off of this daily candlestick right here that's going to be the time to really start swing trading those puts because we could be setting up for a nasty drop to fill this gap that's waiting to blow at 561.30 on friday right there could be a big sell off heading into friday based off of what i'm seeing we're going to take it day by day but if we're getting if we're getting a nice spike heading into tomorrow that should be a good opportunity to start swing trading puts if that's something you want to do, right? Um, is best, if you're going to do it that early, to go with next Friday. And then there could be another swing trade on, um, you know, there could be another swing trade on Thursday. There could be another swing trade on Thursday where we just hold till Friday. So technically, there's three swing trading opportunities that I'm setting up, man. If the SPY is maintaining resistance, just, you know, closing overall bearish on this daily chart, below like 572 on Wednesday and Thursday, you're gonna wanna swing trade puts for a day trade heading into um, Friday. You can do that on Thursday. That's what um, this overall daily chart is showing me, right? So you can look for something like this, where it's just forming lower highs, forming resistance for two days, Wednesday and Thursday. And then if you're seeing a bearish close on Thursday, you can swing trade puts if you like for a sell off on Friday. That's another trade idea. So I'm showing you multiple trade ideas. And with all these trade ideas, it helps open up your eyes on how to see the market. And then from there, you have all the ideas and it gives you the levels and um, you're simply stacking the deck that you have, you know, the heart of cards, you're stacking everything in your favor at these overall levels to confirm which pattern, which history is going to um, repeat itself in a sense, right? So um, going into the 10 day, 30 minute chart. So in terms of the 10 day, 30 minute chart, I'm going to break this down um, for you here real quick. So in terms of the focus, it is mainly going to be on this key resistance um, zone. If this could just load right here. Give me one second. Wait for this to load. Um, so here we go. So in terms of what I'm seeing on the SPY here. Based off of how this looks, this 10 day, 30 minute chart looks fucking identical to this day right here. This day right here. If you compare, um, you know, if you compare September 26th to today 
and you look at the pre-market chart and you look at what happened, you look at the pre-market chart, you look at what happened, sold off very hard in the morning, sold off very hard in the morning, then it started to spike later on throughout the day, then it started to spike later on throughout the day, right? So um, very similar. So this is what it's telling me, man. For those of you who stayed said in this video, man, this is going to be like the golden information. I'm seeing a very key pattern where you're going to want to buy put options. I already showed you on that daily chart how the SPY, even if it um, reacts bullish at market open um, for a potential quick spike, is likely going to sell off. So these are the levels, man. See this previous support right here towards this um, 574. This is support 574 to 574.40. Once it cracks, it sells off, then it spikes back up to that previous support. That's a breakdown in retest to react as a resistance. Based off the weekly and daily chart, the same thing can occur where the SPY sells off. So tomorrow can look potentially like this day. Look in the comparison for September 27th. The market can look very, very similar to September 27th. If we're starting to gap up into the pre-market, you're gonna wanna focus um, put options at key resistance levels. And we're going to be going with the breakdown and retest levels. This is where the SPY had a very nice breakdown. And in a sense, it's not retest at this 570. 570 is going to be your first overall zone. Now, your true best level that hasn't been retested is going to be 572, 572.20, 572.50, and 573.40. Those are your best levels for fucking put options. Those levels, without a doubt, heading into this fucking week, should work phenomenal. I mean, I'd be so confident to say where it's likely going to work, where you can just kind of get in and you don't need a confirmation in a sense, but I would encourage you to use all the confirmations you can at those levels to confirm that it's actually going to be bearish, right? Instead of just, you know, reacting bearish out of foundational, out of foundational reason, right? So um, 572 20, 572 50. 573.50 are your best levels possible for fucking puts. If this ends up going super bullish, then 575 all the way. But I'm telling you, man, that previous support is going to react as resistance very, very likely. So you need to keep an eye on 570. That's your lower level. From there, 571.50 has some potential. Keep an eye on it. But the true best level is going to be 572.50 to 573 to 574. Here, I'll even go back throughout um, the daily you know, overall chart. And um, we'll kind of measure. So in terms of this day, it went from, let's see, um, 550. And then the next day, it spiked to 554.43. So four points above the previous day low. So 566. So um, yeah, towards that 570 mark to 572 to 573. Those three levels are your three levels of zones. If you're going with the lower level, best wait for confirmation. If you're going with the higher levels, is likely just going to crash. So you can just kind of get in in a sense, but I encourage you to use confirmations, right? So um, that's what I'm seeing on the overall 10-day, 30-minute chart. And then in terms of call options for scalping opportunities, the main levels, we could see a bounce at the previous day lows. Just be careful. So that would be um, 566. 565, we're likely going to bounce first. This is the gap breakdown level. The SPY gap down, it opened up lower than a previous closing price, gap down. And um, you take the low of day, 565.20, there's no support. It's likely going to try to bounce first when it hits this level at 565.20 for a nice little move to 567.30, right? That's what it did um, overall last time in terms of measuring the overall move within an hour's worth of price action. So you can look for a scalping opportunity to buy calls at 565.20 on the first overall test. Just be aware. If it works first, it's likely going to drop once it starts retesting back down. And it, once it goes under 565, there's no support. And that's when you're looking at, as you can see right here, a hard flush, a big sell-off to 561 to fill the gap at 561.40 for the gap reversal strategy at 561.40. So that's the overall market analysis um, heading into tomorrow. And then, of course, the gap. You guys know the gap reversal strategy. So um. 573.76. We have a new gap that's waiting to fill above. Um, that's going to be best level for put options. 573.76. Gap reversal for the puts. And then um, strategy works both ways. 561.36. Gap reversal for the calls. When the SPY drops down to fill this gap right here, swing trade, 
call options if you're seeing a trend reversal or daily candlestick right before the market's closing in the last 10 minutes this is likely going to be a phenomenal swing trade opportunity to buy call options at 561.40 and then in terms of swing trading put options best fucking level would be 573.76 but if you're seeing that resistance form towards that 571 to 573 to 572 overall zone tomorrow you can start your swing trading position if you're seeing a maintain of resistance towards that level and double top of those bearish wicks and into thursday you can try to take a swing trade heading into um you know thursday just to friday right but like i said there's three swing trading opportunities setting up for puts one for tomorrow um one for thursday to friday if it reacts bearish um you know um one one from excuse me one from wednesday to friday there could be another one from thursday to friday there could be another one from literally you could take it on wednesday or thursday and you could hold it up until friday and then there could be another one where you hold it for a fucking month so there's four potential opportunities on puts if you know how to confirm these daily candles and then um for calls swing trade calls at 561.36 so um i mainly day trade i do have swing trading strategies that works it's just um they're more rare to come by so in terms of like the day trades um if you know, in terms of the day trading strategy where I'm holding for the bigger wins, buying further out of the money option contracts, um, in most situations on average, there tends to be like two to three trades um, per day, right? So on a slow day, it might be one to two trades. On a more volatile day, it could be like four to five trades, right? So um, you can average that out if you want. And then um, in terms of the swing trades, I would say in terms of like current market conditions with my swing trading strategies, is more of like just two swing trades a week, uh, two, two swing trades a month, like two to three, I, ideally like two swing trades a month. I don't do a lot of swing trading, um, but you know, one of the beauty, one of the best things about options is, like I said, the most you put in is what you lose and you can actually make big percentage gains and make gains on your overall money, right? So that's the beauty of it, man. If you buy shares, you're not gonna be able to make much unless you put in a ton of money, right? Um, so um yeah now with that being said in terms of you know what we ended up doing today this was the trade of the day man with this one trade alone you could have just called it for the day man look at this so every single day so you guys get access in terms of team roar you get access to a real-time zero date options train alert system every single day you get access to the morning game plan um and as you can see right here we ended up buying puts. We bought these uh, SPY 570 puts at 58 cents a contract. They ended up going to 420 a contract. Yes. Um, and in terms of yesterday, yesterday, I ended up going three for three on the day in terms of yesterday. In each trade that I entered, I ended up top ticking the SPY buying puts at the exact lows when SPY was at the peak. The puts went up 600%. I ended up making like 60% on those, right? But you can leave runners, right? Um, we always encourage you to hold, leave some runners, right? Because the plays that we tend to buy tend to go further in the money if you hold. And um, in terms of the calls, I had two trades on calls. I bottom tick call options towards the exact lows. In both the trades on calls, went up 600%. In total, if you held all three trades, you could have made an 1,800% profit return. I literally bottom tick calls twice, and then I top ticked um, SPY buying puts at the low, right? So um, in terms of the main trade of the day, it was SPY puts literally at market open. You could have just called it on the day. As um, soon as we got in, puts went from $0.58 cents to $0.68. Cents, and then you can see there's a confirmation to add just one minute after getting in. And then um, we ended up exiting at 140 a contract. And like I said, they quickly went to 420 a contract if you had left runners. So with that being said, for those of you who are serious about you know joining our secured private organization, you can trade and chat alongside with us. It's going to be the first link down below within the description. We have tons of members. And um, with that being said, in terms of what's unique about this uh, zero date options trading alert system that we have is we are known for buying cheap, far, low risk, out of money option contracts. And we are known for selling them deep in the money for the biggest percentage gains within the market. And we have a 90% plus success rate doing this. Now, the beauty of this options trading alert system and this type of trading style is very, very simple. The max risk per trade, you can put into the contracts. The contracts are so cheap, so, so low risk. Um, you know, like in this overall trade, you can see right here, in this morning trade, the contracts are so fucking cheap in this morning trade, right? We're going so fucking far out of the money. Um, so with that being said, risking 58, you can literally risk 58 cents, you know, $58 a contract to make $400 in this particular trading um, situation to potentially make uh, $400. They ended up going to 140. So with just one contract, you could have made $100 within minutes. So the point is you can put in your max risk per trade and um, you don't need a stop loss. That's a huge, a huge edge. There's no other system 
where you can really do that in a sense. If you're trading live with real money, the only way to do that is to buy something that's like cheap and low risk and um, borrow the money option contracts are very, very cheap. It's the lowest barrier to entry and they go up the biggest percentage gains within the overall market. So it's great for small accounts and rich people prefer to trade this way because they hold their trades for loaner periods of time. If that's their style where they hold trades for loaner periods of time, they're going to pay less, risk less and make more and bigger percentage gains than their money. That's why they don't go further in the money if they're holding their trades for the biggest percentage gains within the market, right? So um, the beauty of this is you can put in your max risk per trade into these options and you know exactly how much money you're going to lose, right? If they expire worthless, the most you lose is what you put in to these naked options. So um, with that being said, it sets you up in a situation where you know exactly how much you're going to lose, which should be able to be your max risk per trade if you actually have some money to trade with, right? That could be like 2% of your account. If you like, you could be risking 2% of your account, 3% of your account on an overall trade. It could be less if you have more capital, right? Um, the less you have, the more you're going to have to risk. But the point is you can put in your max risk per trade into the contracts and you can make 200, 300, 400, 500%. You can make unlimited percentage gains, right? We have trades every single month. There's three trades a month on average where we, where we make a 1000% return. If you leave runners on the trades, there's many 500% plus fucking gainers. Like I said yesterday, if you left runners, there was three 600% gains. I bottom tick calls twice and I top tick fucking um, spy at the exact lows buying the puts. Each one of those trades went up 600% in total collectively. I made 100% out of all three, which is great. But if you leave the runners, then yeah, you can make 600% on those, right? So um, you could put in your max risk per trade. If the contracts expire worthless, they go to fucking zero, then that's the most you lose. You lost your max risk per trade, meaning you don't need a stop loss. You no longer need a stop loss and you're putting yourself in a position that can go up multiple 100% profit returns. I'm telling you, this is the best way to trade once you master this, right? But this is the hardest trading style to master. You have to time things well and you have to hold your trades. But the, the edge is as well, you don't need a stop loss. You do not need a stop loss. In my experience, 70% of the time when we're in a dead play that drops like 50%, it comes back to life. The dead plays come back to life, right? And they go in the money. So later on throughout the day, you can hold. If it goes back in the money, you could sell. You could sell in the money for potential um, nice gains, right? And in terms of the option trading alert system, we tend to avoid adding to losers. Um, since we win so big in terms of like big wins, you know, multiple hundred percent profit returns, we quickly add to winners. When we win, we tend to win big percentage gain wise, right? Um, so um, to increase the winnings on the dollar, we add to winners. We average our cost up. If we're up like 5, 10, 15%, very small wins for us because we hold our trades, we buy further out, we sell in the money, right? Go multiple legs out. We add to winners. So when we're up a little bit, 5, 10, 15, 20%, we add to winners. When we add to the winner, we set a profit stop. So that's the difference. We tend to avoid stop losses, right? And we set profit stops. A profit stop is going to secure your profit. If you are green on a trade and you set a profit stop, it is impossible to go green to red. It's going to protect your new average cost. One winning move in our favor increases the winnings, right? It could, du it could double the winnings. And um, like I said, we're adding quickly into the winners, right? Not when it's up like 50, 60, 70, 80%. We're adding quickly, like 5, 10, 15, 20%. And then um, from there, if you set a profit stop, you move your profit stop up. You move the profit stop up because if the market has a big move against you, then you're going to get back the bulk of your profits unless you didn't move your profit stop up as the trade was working out in your favor, right? So we move the profit stop up to then protect the bulk of our gains, right? So you set the profit stop first to ensure that you don't go green to red. Then you move the profit stop up to ensure that you're not going to get back the bulk of your gains. So based off of everything that I just fucking said, we are doing the exact opposite of what 98% of traders um, are doing. And we have a unique trade alert system that many members are consistently making money from and also learning from trading alongside. Because in order to learn how to trade, you have to actually trade, right? And um, these videos as well should help open up your you know, third eye and intuition within the overall market, help you see things differently. So um, with that being said, if you're serious about trading alongside with us and gaining access to this zero date options trading alert system that we have, is going to be the first link down below within the description. In terms of Team Roar, we've been absolutely crushing it. I will see you guys tomorrow within the chat. I'm going to be signing off.